DME is short for Distance Measuring Equipment. When you're tuned to a DME station, which is often co-located with a VOR transmitter, and you have the proper equipment on board, it'll display distance from the point. If you know what radial you're on and what your DME distance is, you could fix an exact position on a chart. Here, we're on the 175 radial at 12 DME. There's only one spot on Earth where we could be. As we fly inbound direct to the station, we see the distance getting smaller on the readout. Let's be clear about what factors go into that readout on the DME. There are two things that affect it. First is our altitude above the transmitter, and our horizontal, or ground, distance from the station. Our equipment on board sends a signal to the DME station and then gets back a reply. The equipment times the round trip of the signal and computes the straight line distance to the station, called slant range. Here's why both altitude and ground distance are important. If our altitude is 6,000 feet, which is about 1 nautical mile, and our ground distance is 10 nautical miles, the slant range distance will be about 10.04 nautical miles. This is the Pythagorean theorem, right? Our DME equipment rounds to the nearest tenth of a mile, so it'll display 10.0, showing no difference between slant and ground distance. But as we fly closer, maintaining the same 6,000 feet altitude, the slant range is now 6.08. The unit will round to the nearest tenth of a mile, which is 6.1. Now we do start seeing a difference between DME distance and ground distance. Let's see this in action. We're borrowing a friend's Piper Aero, which has some older avionics in it, including this bona fide standalone DME receiver. You don't see these too much anymore. We're flying towards the Baltimore VOR, located on the field at BWI Airport. It's on 115.1, so we'll set that on our DME. It shows us about 6.5 nautical miles from the station. Now, most of us don't have actual DME receivers, but the FAA allows us to substitute approved GPS units for DME for all required purposes. On the Garmin 530, we can look at distances by going to our nearest page and finding the Baltimore VOR, BAL. It also gives us distance, but it's not the same as the DME distance, which is slant range. Instead, it's the actual ground distance between where our aircraft is on a chart and where the station is. Notice as we fly here that there's a slight difference. We're at 6,500 feet, so over one nautical mile above the ground here in Baltimore. Just for fun, let's also bring up the distance of the VOR on foreflight, which you can see at the bottom left. This is also using ground distance, so it'll match up with what's on the GPS, which makes sense because Foreflight is using GPS to compute the distance too. In fact, nothing will be able to give you slant range distance unless it's actually receiving the DME signal itself, like our standalone unit here is doing, or maybe a receiver on a PFD might be able to. In any case, it's important to be aware of the difference because as we get really close and overfly the station, look at the difference. The GPS counts all the way down to zero, but the DME never gets below one mile. This is because even directly over the station, we're more than 6,000 feet up, which is one nautical mile. So at least 6,000 feet above a transmitter, our DME and GPS distances can disagree by up to a mile. This is a lot, but in practice, is it really that dire? Let's look at an approach into this airport, the ILS-33 right. If we're doing the non-precision localizer only version of this, we're gonna hold 2,000 feet until the final approach fix, Oriel, which is at 5.8 DME. Here we are passing that point right now. Both the DME and the GPS read 5.8, which agrees with the fix. You'll find that on these instrument approaches, we're at a low enough altitude that the slant range and ground distance aren't too much different. A good rule of thumb is that for every thousand feet of altitude we're above the ground, we should be at least one mile from the station or expect to see a discrepancy. Here at 2,000 feet, we're well outside that area. It's important to understand how slant range and ground distance differ and which source you're getting, but remember that the FAA allows substitution of an IFR-approved GPS in lieu of DME, even when taking into account these differences. For more training tips and full ground schools, head over to the Flight Insight website linked here and in the description today.